and obviously a difficult decision, but how did you come to it? Why now? Yeah, not a decision I've taken lightly. Uh, it's I've been open and honest about when I'll finish and when the day will come for the last three years. I've engaged a lot with ex-players as to when they stopped and how it came about and how the transition worked. And each man to, or each person to a man said, there's a, a time and a place where it, it hits you. Um, or the other common answer was, you, you know, you wake up and you know. And that moment came for me in Amsterdam. Um, and I think it's a culmination of a lot of things um, that over the course of my international career, which is, has been a long time, I've just come to the end. I'm glad I was in a, a sound enough space to understand that feeling and, and be well aware of, of what it meant uh, and also what it means both for uh, the England white ball sides that I've led until now and me in my personal life. So the day it, it hit me, it was, it was quite a sad day, um, reaching the end of a, such a special journey. But in, in many ways since that day, I've, I've been incredibly proud um, and content with the decision and excited for English cricket going forward. Uh, there's been so many strong decisions made uh, in a positive way for not only our group but the test group over the last month and a half. Uh, the appointing of two new coaches and a new Red Bull captain uh, and the way that both sides play is, is, is just incredible. So as I sit back now as a fan, I'm incredibly excited. You intimated that you wanted to carry through to the World Cup at the end of the year. So is there any part of you at all that feels that maybe, maybe you're going too early? No, not at all. Not one bit. Um, and right from that day that it, it hit me like a, like I'm not sure what actually. Um, but the day that I knew, it, it, I felt, you know, a, a true sense of ownership to, to make that decision my own. Um, I've always been honest about where the team needs to go and the potential it, it, it has to try and achieve special things and I was as honest as I could be. Uh, I spoke to Rob Key, I spoke to Matthew Mott, the coach, and uh, they were very, very understanding. Did you speak to Brendan McCallum as well? Yeah, uh, obviously Baz is one of my close mates um, and I spoke to him, but I, I've spoken to him about retirement for, for a long time and particularly around his um, and the transition for him and again he said you you will know it will it, it will uh, it will be a feeling that 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 comes and hits you just make sure you recognize it when it comes and you're making the announcement here at lords the scene of that world cup triumph in 2019 rob key says that victory won't define you because of everything else that you've done but is that your career highlight it's fair to say Probably the performance highlight, um, if you could take me back to one moment um, in my international career, I'd probably, and, uh, sorry, to relive, I'd probably go back to when we first started in 2015 at the very beginning of the summer. The journey since then has been absolutely incredible. Um, people talk a lot about performances and uh, how proud you should be, both as a player and as a captain, but actually the, the great people that I've built, some of the best memories with that'll be with me for the rest of my life um, I could definitely really and what now for you I know you're going to continue with domestic cricket in the short term at least any interest in staying within the setup I think at the moment the best thing for the setup is for me to to come out of it and let the new captain find his feet uh, build a relationship with a new coach and ultimately drive towards the next <coughs> World Cups they come thick and fast um, and the potential the team has is unbelievable um, I'm excited to sit back and watch. Um, I'm incredibly grateful and lucky to be a part of such a special time in English cricket. Um, but I think, you know, what's to come could be even more special. Further down the line, might you want to go into coaching? A lot of people think you'd make an excellent coach. I've certainly not ruled it out. Um, certainly down the line, I do, I do think I have something to offer. But I think picking and choosing what the role is and, and, and what that looks like will be the most important part. And you've touched on it already, but what sort of state do you feel you're leaving white ball cricket in this country in? Could the next era be more successful than your era? Absolutely. Um, I think we're, like the foundations that have been built over the last seven years are hopefully ones that will be around for a long time. And 
the future is bright. We're more experienced, more consistent, and we have much more talent than we have ever had um, within England. And the strength and depth in all formats of the game is, is pretty evident at the moment. So I think the free future is extremely bright. And who will succeed you as captain? Josh Butler? Thankfully, it's not a decision that I have to make. Um, there are some obvious candid candidates, uh, Joss Butler being one of them and Moen Ali being uh, the other. There are some tremendous leaders as well within that group. Uh, Johnny Bairstow, Jason Roy, Chris Wokes, Chris Jordan, um, guys that could, could definitely do the job. Obviously Joss has, has been in charge, he's been a, a, an unbelievably good vice captain while I've been captain and when he's stepped in he has been an exceptional leader. Um, he obviously commands himself with the bat as, as, as one of the best players in the world, but also as a leader within the group, he, he, he commands tremendous respect. You don't think the burden of the captaincy on Butler would be too much, but affect his form? No, 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 not at all. Yeah. What makes you confident in that sense? Because he's done it before, um, on tours that I've missed or been injured in, he's come straight in and that is a true test of, of how you hold the weight of each and every decision um, and how it impacts your performance and the evidence is there that it's, it's never affected Joss. You mentioned the moment that you realised that it hit you when you were in the Netherlands. Can you just tell us a little bit more about precisely sort of where and when that moment hit you and, and kind of what emotions were at that point? Yes, yeah, strange emotions because I've never had that feeling before in my life, uh, regardless of being through perform, the team being beaten up and down a country during a World Cup, there's always been a plan and a way out and having the energy and determination to execute those plans is, is a huge part of being in the position that I've been in today and ultimately I, I woke up and, and that energy and determination towards October, I couldn't see a picture. Um, and that's that's it's it's pretty real and vivid the feeling um, and like I said something I've never experienced before so no doubts absolutely no doubts no. I mean obviously you've achieved so much over the years but people I guess will inevitably come back to, to 2019 and what happened here at Lords how proud are you of, of what you and that team achieved three years ago I'm unbelievably proud I think the foundations that started in, in 2015 and obviously culminated in the win in 2019 didn't go without the odd upset, the odd challenging moment, um, moments that stick out. 2016 World Cup final against the West Indies in Calcutta, Champions Trophy semi-final in Cardiff in 2017. And they're all stepping stones and learning experiences that I suppose a group that weren't as comfortable enough to, to play in their own skin and express themselves in the way that they wanted to would have let slip by and wouldn't have learned from them. So culminating in, in 2019, it's, it's obviously a special day and a special moment and one that I will never forget. Yeah, is, is there a particular abiding memory of that day in 2019? There must be so many, but is there one thing that sticks in the, br in the brain more than most? Uh, it, it's actually the moment after the game. Um, I mean, the whole day you're caught up with, with making decisions and, and making sure everybody's all right and trying to uh, think out plans and, and, and think about your own performance in the game. But when the trophy was presented and we were walking around the ground doing a lap of honour, seeing family members, friends, um, you know, everybody that is related to somebody within the squad, the emotions that they went through the whole day and the stories of, of how they felt and experienced the day of, will always stick with me. And playing for England has been such a big part of your life. Um, how much are you going to miss it and what are you going to miss most? The thing I'll miss the most is spending as much time as I have done with some of the greatest people that I know. Um, I've built incredible memories with some of my best friends that just happen to play in the same team as me and I'll miss that.